Fun Facts presents the 1953 series through 1955 series Triumph TR2. It is a 50s classic car and it was introduced back in 1953 and had a production run through 1955. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So let's get started now. The Triumph TR2 is a sports car produced by the Standard Motor Company in the United Kingdom between 1953 and 1955. It was only available in roadster form. The car had 121 CID or 1991 CC four cylinder standard wet liner inline four engine from Vanguard fitted with twin H4 type SU carburetors and tuned to increase its output to 90 BPH. The body was mounted on a substantial separate chassis with coil sprung independent suspension at the front and leaf spring live axle at the rear. Either wire or disc wheels could be supplied. The transmission was a four speed manual unit with optional top gear overdrive. Lockheed drum brakes were fitted all around. A total of 8,636 TR2s were produced that replaced the, it was replaced by the TR3 in 1955. The standards Triumph Roadster was outdated and underpowered. The company boss, Sir John Black, tried to acquire the Morgan Motor Company but failed. He still wanted an effort for the ability for the sports car to be affordable, so a prototype two-seater was built on a shortened version of the Standard 8's chassis and powered by the Standard Vanguard's 2.0-liter straight four. The resulting Triumph 20TS prototype was revealed at the 1952 London Motor Show. Black asked BRM development engineer and test driver Ken Richardson to assess the 20TS after he declared it to be a death trap. A project was undertaken to improve on the design. A year later, the TR2 was revealed. It had better looks, a simple ladder type chassis, a longer body, and a bigger boot. It was loved by American buyers and became the best earner for Triumph. In 1955, the more powerful TR3 was released with a redesigned grille and a GT package that included a factory hardtop. As of 2011, there were approximately 377 licensed and 52 SORN TR2s of the 8,636 TR2s produced registered with the DBLA in the UK. And in the United States, 1,800 were known to survive. The performance, a car with overdrive tested by Motor Magazine in 1954, had a top speed of 107 miles per hour and could accelerate from zero to 60 in 12 seconds. A fuel consumption of 34.5 miles per imperial gallon was recorded. The test car cost 900 euros, including taxes, and $56 extra for the overdrive. The magazine also commented that the TR2 was the lowest priced British car available able to exceed 100 miles per hour. Concentrating on rapid entry into the lucrative U.S. sports car market, Standard Triumph had given little thought to the competitive potential of their new TR2 Roadster. Two events would highlight this omission. The Jabki Tess and earlier Privateer rally victories. Employing production the TR2 with optional streamlining equipment 
under shield, rear wing spats, metal cockpit cover, Triumph attains speeds of 124 miles per hour on the closed Jabki motorway in Belgium in 1953. The following March, customer TR2s took first, second, and fifth places in the prestigious RAC rally. The publicity derived from these accomplishments led to the factory to establish a competition department under the leadership of Ken Richardson, supporting both works and customer cars. Between 1954 and 1955, the TR2 was campaigned in the Mealy Miglia, the Ulster TT at Dunrod, the Grand Prix of Monaco, and Lockbourne Races USA, the Alpine Monte Carlo, the RAC Thousand Island in Canada, the Nigeria 24 Hour, the third ADAG, Run Rafault, the Circuit of Ireland, and among others, earning numerous outright team and class awards, including the coveted Coupe des Alps. In 1955, the Triumph Works team of three modified TR2s with disc brakes, larger carburetors, and the jab key windscreens were entered into the 24 hour de, de Le Mans, reaching speeds of 120 miles per hour on the Mosellane Strait. The team would complete the legendary endurance race in 14th, 15th, and 19th positions. Some of the modifications on these cars were the disc brakes, the carburetors and would subsequently appear on the Triumph TR3. Doug Whiteford won the 1955 Moomba TT at the Albert Park Circuit in Victoria, Australia driving a Triumph TR2. Humble beginnings have never been an absolute impediment to the creation of great cars. Automotive history is richly endowed with admired vehicles pulled together with ingenious use of existing parts and crafty stretching of scarce development funds. The 1953 Triumph TR2 Roadster can certainly be counted among that number. The impetuous for the TR came from Sir John Black, Managing Director of Standard Motor Company and head of the Triumph Motor Company, which he bought in late 1944. Black wanted and watched somewhat envious of the Jaguar sprouted into performance with sporting cars built around standard supplied engines. The well-received arrival of the Jaguar XK120 in 1948 precluded Black from building a sports car of that size and type. But between the XK and the tiny MGT series, there existed a price gap that Black and the company might exploit. Black decided that stocks of unused frames from the pre-war vintage standard Flying 9 could serve as the new car's basis. For power, a 2.1 liter four engine from the standard Vanguard of, and Ferguson tractors, no less, was enlisted. The Triumph Mayflower sedan was tapped for a cool coil spring independent front suspension and a rear axle. All of the course were modified and improved. For instance, the engine displacement was scaled back to two liters for racing class purposes. Twin SU carburetors were installed and compression was increased. The result was 90 horsepower, enough to make the production two R, the two TR2's legitimate 100 mile per hour cars. Body engineer Walter Belgro made the most of the miser, miserly tooling budget to create the purposeful body design. Complex curves were achieved by welding panels together rather than using 
intricate and expensive stampings. A simple mesh in a deep hole serve as the grill. And fixed frog eye headlamps pods were used in place of retractable units bell rope at first considered. Having first appeared in a prototype form at the Earl's Court Motor Show in the autumn of 1952, the Triumph TR2 entered series production in August of 1953, selling for about 2400 in the U.S. It quickly won favor for its power and made winners of those who, came, who campaigned in its Sports Car Club of America events. By the time it gave way to a more powerful and facelifted TR3 in the mid-1955s, 8,628 had been manufactured. Okay, well if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all of the 50s and 60s sports cars. We'll be doing the muscle cars. We'll be doing autoramas and custom cars and hybrid cars. We'll be doing all of the hot rods and there's a little bit of everything for everybody. So again, thank you. We look forward to seeing you when we upload our next video and always, always, always take good care.